I thought it would be a great idea to pull the engine box and axles and front subframe out of the Van Laplace EFI. That way I can strip the engine down, send bits of it off for blasting, um, send or well, basically take a look at the block, see how good it is, work out what pits are needed and then devise a cunning plan for putting it all back together again. What I forgot is that I've left my engine crane at my dad's house. Um, the van has run out of MOT and I don't actually need it that much anymore so what I think I'm going to use it as is just like a mobile workshop mobile meaning around my driveway um, and that way the big bulky engine could come apart in there and I won't be using up my garage so hopefully this plan should work it's another windy rainy night and I'm out here fiddling with the engine, just stripping it down, putting bits in boxes and bags and stuff. I've just undone the top of the inlet manifold and then taken the wiring loom off and then done the main inlet manifold to cylinder head bolts, undone all of those and I'm going to get my first look inside in a moment. I'll lift this out of the way, then I'll undo the front and rear valley gasket clamps, lift that out of the way and we can have a look at what the rocker gear uh, looks like once the cam covers are off and we can have a look at the push rods and the cam itself hopefully it's not blue burnt and all the rest of it one other interesting discovery there's no thermostat so somebody has removed that probably because it was getting hot and they thought that would help and it probably didn't but we shall see just a little observation again you can see the valley gasket has blown up here on this side it should be a nice smooth valley shape curve this side though has all lifted up that is probably pressurizing internally due to a blocked filter or something um, usually not a good sign because it's the evidence of a slightly sick engine but we shall find out in a moment just how sick I'm actually quite pleased it might look really gunky and horrible but Rover V8's older types of engines like this seem to do that and compared to some of them that I've had that's really not bad at all and what also is good is that the camshaft still has lobes on it even up at the front and there's no bluing or signs of overheating or really anything particularly untoward in here it just looks um, like an original engine so yeah happy days this is going to be really hard to show one-handed but I'll give it a go. The rocker gear looks really good. Basically the rockers usually wear a groove in the underside of the shaft and although there's dirt here there's no wear lip which is really unusual but it basically paints a picture of an engine that was really well serviced. Um, so that rocker gear, this one's the same, there's a little bit of cleaning off needed linishing of the pads the actual arms themselves on the shaft and this would be problematic are really good there's there's nothing there I'll try and find a really bad one to come to show you the comparison but yeah th this probably just wants a damn good clean and then can be reused um, but you know it depends what comes up on eBay what I can find and what I remember that I have in store somewhere. I know I've got a brand new set of genuine British Leyland rocker arm. It's the next evening and it's not raining, which is nice. Today, or well, this evening, I've pulled the manifolds off and the downpipes. They actually look quite good. I'm gonna pull out all the push rods and take the heads off and have a look in the bores. Some people, when they're stripping engines, they keep all the head bolts, they keep everything and they number it all and they embed it in a big sheet of cardboard. And I do that if I want to keep everything on nut and bolt. But this, I'll be replacing all of the tappets. Um, the rocker arms and everything I'm going to keep in the original arrangement. All the cylinder head bolts are going to be thrown in the bin and I'll probably put an ARP um, head stud kit in it. The push rods though, I do want them numbered because whilst the follower is going to change and therefore that rubbing surface is going to have to rub into a new follower, 
this end is already bedded into its particular part of the rocker arm and I want to keep that because they squeak a lot if you put them together with sort of mismatched partners or they, they do in my experience either whether they're new or whether they're old if they're with a different partner they just make a funny noise so um, <clears throat> this one I'm just taping them up then I'll number them and I'll do each bank individually starting with one at the front and uh, work in higher numbers towards the rear got the first of the two cylinder heads off uh, not a great deal to say really there's not any particularly bad scoring or anything I'm gonna have to clean all of this out before I turn the engine over um, it's got the right pistons in it still the high compression ones which is good they usually have a dimple in it and you can tell by the um, not particularly pronounced depression in the top so they got that dot and you can tell it's um, not been machined out I think you can still see some sort of honing marks that's a little bit of I don't know ring polishing maybe perhaps where that piston is sat the head itself I'm pretty sure that this engine's been apart before because you can kind of see some abnormal sort of not clean machining marks but maybe somebody's had this head off and then cleaned all the old gasket off the old mating surfaces and then put it back on but that in a way is quite good because I'd rather have one that hasn't been skimmed the one that has been skimmed um, you can see up here again I don't know whether it's showing in this camera but you can see sort of uneven uh, marks rather than a neatly machined surface so pretty sure that's been off but all in all no scary marks no scary scoring, no polishing, and a few honing walks. So all in all, rather pleased. Right, I'll whip the other head off and see what that looks like. Cylinder head number two is off. Well, technically, I think number one, because it's number one cylinder is here, or whatever. Again, you can definitely tell this engine's been apart, been scrubbed up, and then put back together again. But as I said earlier, I don't mind. That's better than the head having been skimmed once already and then needing a skim again. So hopefully it's dimensionally the same as it left the factory, which would be nice. The no cracks, no nothing untoward going on, hasn't suffered any head gasket failures, all looks good. Waterways look a bit gummy, but uh, compared to some I've seen, they're actually really good. Sometimes this gets eaten away so that there's a real possibility that it's going to interfere with the mating surface of the cylinder head gasket around there where that is not the case it all looks nice as does the other one then in the bores this side I haven't looked yet so we will inspect oh, excuse me, together at the same time right again there's no horrible scoring there's just a bit of chattering up here but I'm pretty sure all of that will hone out. Again, this engine, I did turn it over just to see whether it was seized because this car had sat for a long time and it hadn't. So these pistons could have well have been up here. It's not necessarily wear related. It might be just that it pushed a whole load of dirt up and sat there while I was fiddling around with it. But um, yeah, nothing scary. So, so far the block looks really good and that's important because it's the original... It's got the original 31A for a Vandal Plus EFI. It's got the right pistons, right compression ratio, and that number is the right one according to the logbook for my registration. So when it gets rebuilt, it can all go back and be a numbers matching car. So that's all good. Next, I'm going to lift out or try and lift out all of the followers. That's not always easy. Sometimes they get stuck in there and the only way to get them out is to um, tap them out once you've pulled the camshaft through ideally you want these out first but we'll see what we can do yet another day and the tear down continues again yes it's raining it was supposed to be dry but it is now raining i have just been stripping off bits and pieces that i can get to now i want to take the box off um, this is quite an irritating and laborious task Particularly if you're working inside a van with no engine crane 
<coughs> but anyway, first step is to remove the inspection cover from between the sump and the bell housing, which was that bit, and then um, undo the torque converter bolts. Uh, those ones there, I think, or I hope. Yeah, that's some kind of pickup. Actually, I don't know what that is. But yeah, I want to undo the torque converter from that flex plate. Um, so that's what I'm doing at the moment. Great success. Box is off. It's uh, kind of held in place annoyingly by one of the cooler pipes running up the side because it's in the way of the dipstick and I couldn't be bothered to unbolt the dipstick but I'll do that in a minute pretty sure this has been a part before because on this side one of the bolts was wrong all the others were fine and in their right places but yeah there was one that wasn't quite happy um, ring gear looks good the starter motor I think might have been a replacement because it's got a quality sticker and tag and everything on it but that's good I'm gonna go and have a cup of tea then I'll get the starter off I'll get the ring gear off actually I might leave the ring gear on because I still haven't broken the crank pulley bolt off my little weedy impact gun won't do it and I've got a uh, another big mains one um, which I'll have to go and get on the weekend bring it over here and crack that off if I can't do that then I'll just put a breaker bar on the bolt and use that lever bar through the ring gear off the side of the starter so still plenty to do but getting there well that cup of tea must have powered me up because I managed to get the crank pulley bolt off with the breaker bar and that snap on between the um, ring gear and the starter motor case so that's good because now I can pull the front cover power steering pump bracketry uh, oil pump all the rest of it off the front of the engine and have a look inside timing cover off I haven't pulled the pump apart yet to see how worn that is but that is a lot of slack for a chain bearing in mind that's what controls the timing between the crank and the camshaft so you can set the crank pulley to top dead centre do all you want but if the slack, if the chain's like that not a lot of point really uh, gonna continue dismantling stuff gonna take the timing gear off see if I can get the camshaft out I haven't actually pulled the followers out all the way yet because they're pretty much stuck in there through oil uh, you know degraded oil that's carbonized and stuck to the bodies of the followers so with the cam out of the way hopefully I can push them up and out the camshaft is out yes it's worn but it's not horrible that one there what's that um, cylinder number three that is worn so there was something going wrong with that otherwise they're all really good even the ones at the front and the rear of the engine which is unusual what is also excellent is that all of the cam what you call them the actual bearing surfaces that the camshaft sits on there's absolutely no scoring fretting pickup nothing which is excellent because although you can drive these out and fit new ones these cam journal bearings they originally would have been installed and then line board um, and that means that the whole lot would have been installed and then bored through to make it all concentric and lovely so when you put aftermarket replacements in obviously you can't do that and you're never sure that they're actually all perfectly aligned um, I can't see that dirty line in it that's just that stain there you can see some writing on it there look I don't think that's been in there that long you know actually that can't be writing that's got to be scratches weird um yeah so basically that looks really good actually I'll do a proper clean up and check it later and I'll have a look at the other ones um, the chain and that sprocket that's all rubbish the camshaft's rubbish that's going in the bin the followers are rubbish they're going in the bin but yeah it's certainly a rebuildable engine 
this gives me confidence that the bottom end is probably also okay when we get to that stage in here we have the block I've got it up at that angle at the moment but I need to go and get a tray drain the oil I forgot I hadn't done that so I'm um, oil pissed out all over my van it doesn't really matter because I think this van is end of life van now but um, yeah gonna continue on get the starter off get the engine mounts off get the oil drain get the sump off have a look at the bottom end got the sump off got the windage tray windage tray whatever you want to call it off and a pickup strainer now I'm pulling the pistons out and once again I'm super happy because um, there's really naff all wrong with this crankshaft so much and again we're only looking at the big um, yeah the big ends the main journal bearings are the ones that I'm most interested in uh, but these um, big end bearings they're looking really nice that is the worst worn one that I've found out of any of these so far and I'm on the what have I got four out so far um, so it's looking rather nice you can see it's just normal wear so it just started to go through onto the brass or copper backing whatever it is the pistons themselves are in really good condition there's no major pickup or scuffing the there's no burning to them no chips the piston rings are the chrome faced ones by the looks of things and also compared to a lot of engines I've had the gudgeon pin the little end is still nice and stiff um, so that all paints a picture of a rather nice engine um, I'm just taking things apart keeping them numbered for the cylinder you don't really need to worry about which way around the cap goes or because they're all marked they have um, not for number but if you see that indent pairs always face each other and then on the rod itself you have a dimple which also tells you which way around it goes so um, although they're going all back together exactly as they came out and numbered um, if you do lose track you can usually work it out it's always the last one isn't it this is number two the crank looks fine there's some tiny score marks but nothing to worry about just pulled the bearing cap off and there's a really weird kind of pattern on it almost like it's a delamination of the coating I don't know whether you can see that I'm never sure how good this iPhone is sorry um GoPro and then on the left there you've got a, a, a like a split or a score so I have no idea what that is I've never seen that sort of thing before so answers on a postcard but it's like the surface coating of the bearing has delaminated which is weird um, it's probably of no consequence because as I say the actual journal there it's got some minor port like score lines but nothing bad um, so far I think this crank these bits anyway will just polish up um, I'm hopeful that the mains when they come off are going to reveal much the same we shall find out it's moment of truth time that might have come out wrong moment of truth time all of the big oh sorry the main end what am i on about the big goddamn bolts holding the main bearing caps in they're all off again i've got a strange kind of semi delaminated bearing surface but the crank looks okay and just as a side note oh that one's a bit more heavily scored mm, crap that one might need a little bit of work um yeah what am i on about I'm getting distracted i read a book ages ago where it said that to get these in and out you have to sort of snap them in and out because at the bottom you have this tiny register and a little shoulder and really you want to kind of break these out of position some of these are actually you know pretty much falling out so um, no big deal that one's kind of scored again crank looks good 
that one I will have to snap out I think that one does just come out again these are all numbered so it doesn't really matter and they can only you know they've all got an arrow and a number on it pointing to the front of the engine so they can come out and then the bottom one uh, is a bit of a twat usually so I'll have to hammer him probably very carefully hammer ramble 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 but um, so far ooh, maybe it'll come out that way I don't want to do that right I'm gonna clean the hand put gloves on get those out and report back super super happy crank I think is good or well, it's a lot better than some of them I've had block is mint there's no rusting there's no wear lipping there's still honing marks in it all the way up and down the pistons haven't been smacking into the sides of it you know that's about as bad as it got you can still see the um, like engineering marks on it so very 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 whoops 